So another way to transfer files between the PC and the ST is to use one of these, um, an Ultra Satan device. Um, it sounds like a, a boss out of Doom, but it isn't. This is, a, this is a hard disk replacement for your Atari ST that uses SD cards, there's one here, um, as the storage mechanism. It's not intended for transferring files, but if you partition and format the SD card in the right way, then you can mount the SD card on both your PC and on your ST, and hence use it to, to shuffle files backwards and forwards. Um, what are the advantages of this method? Well, the first one is it's definitely the fastest way to transfer files because you're only limited by the speed that your PC can write to the SD card, i.e. really, really fast. Um, secondly, this method doesn't need any kind of floppy, floppy disk or floppy drive at all. So if you don't have a floppy drive on your PC or your ST floppy drive is broken, you can still use this method. Um, the disadvantages, well, it's a bit expensive. One of these, these Ultra Satan devices is about 100 euros, um, but it's a worthy investment. They're, they're really good, and it's a very fast, very reliable hard disk replacement for your ST as well. Um, so how do you hook it up? Well, the first thing you do is, if we look at the back here, it's got a, a micro USB power adapter. So this is the standard BlackBerry or Android connector. So you get one of those and you plug it in, plug it in just here. The second thing you do is, let's look at the back of the Atari, you plug into the Atari's hard disk connector. So that's this one here. So we take the second connector on the Ultra Satan and we plug it in just here. So that's that. Um, now I'll wire up everything for real and I'll join you again when we're ready to transfer files. Okay, so before we're able to transfer files, there's some setup we need to do. Um, firstly, we need an SD card um, and I've got one here, uh, one gigabyte, fresh out of the packet. Secondly, we need some hard disk drivers and some partitioning software for our ST. Um, so I bought Peter Putnick's PP hard disk drivers because um, it's, a, it's a bit of a two-in-one. You get both partitioning software and you get hard disk drivers. Um, secondly, they're specially designed to facilitate the creation of um, what they call gem DOS drives, i.e. drives that work on both the PC and the ST, which is what we want. And thirdly, and this is what I've got highlighted here, it features a quick start SD card image. So we can get this all working and configured without using any floppy disks. Um, lastly, we need a disk imager program to write the quick start image to our SD card. So I downloaded and installed Win32 disk imager here um, from SourceForge. There are alternative programs available for Mac and for Linux, um, but this is a pretty good one for Windows. So let's get started. Um, first, we need to write the quick start image to our SD card. So I'm going to load up the Win32 disk imager. And what I do is I pick the image I want to write to my SD card. So for me, it's C temp transfer files to SD card, SD card quick start image, open. And then secondly, I pick the device that I want to write the image to, which in this case is my G drive. We can see the G drive here is my SD card. Be really careful with this. Um, if you chose the, the wrong drive, the wrong drive letter, you could corrupt your files or you could corrupt your, your OS. So, you know, do be careful. So I press write, yes to continue, and we're done. So let's just check that I'm able to have a look at the G drive. And you can see on my SD card here, I've got a few files. And now I'm going to eject this and pop this into the ST and check that I can browse it. So I'm going to reboot the ST. And you can see that as it comes up, it says, 
here we go in the corner, I've got a 14 megabyte disk um, and it's loaded up to ST medium resolution and I've got a RAM disk and a few different files here. Um, so let's go through this. I can see the files okay, but the disk is only 15 megabytes. So that's not good, I want more space than that. So to fix that, we run the partitioner, ppp13u.program. So I'll double click that. And I'm in the partitioning interface. So first you press the drive, AS or ACSI 0, and you click this and it displays the topology of the SD card. And we're reminded again that we only have a single drive of 14 megabytes. Um, so let's start changing this. So first I'll overwrite the 14 megabytes with a much larger one, 511 megabytes. Um, this is the max you can use. Uh, the ST operating system um, TOS can't address any more than that. Um, some older STs which have TOS 1.02 or below um, can only address 256 megabytes. So do be aware of that. But for most STs, it's 511. So I've done that. Let's move on to D. And you can see here I've got reports the free space up in the top corner here. So I've got 459 megabytes remaining. So I'm going to use 459. And press that again. And now I've got zero megabytes remaining. So I press partition and initialize all. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, go on. While this is happening, it's worth mentioning that the, the ST supports up to 14 drives. So with 511 megabytes maximum each, um, an eight gigabyte SD card works quite well. So now that the partitioning's done, I'm gonna press ACSI zero again to show the topology. And you can see that I've got one 511 megabyte disk, one 459 megabyte disk, and I'm done. So ready to exit. So next, um, we're done with the partitioning, but we need to install the, the hard disk driver. So I double click this, usab101.tos, double click. Okay, so it's detected that I have one SD card in here with 970 megabytes. Yep, that's right. And it's number zero. So I press zero and then I to install. Okay, that's installed. Press any key to exit. And then let's reboot the ST. So the ST is loaded up and it says it's detected two partitions, drive C with 511 megabytes and drive D with 459. So I've landed on the ST desktop, but I can only see my drive C. What happened to my drive D? Um, so I have to add that. So I click on a hard drive here and go options, install disk drive. And as drive identifier, I put D, install. And that's added my D drive. So if I double click that, I can see it's empty. If I double click the C drive, I can see that's empty. I'm going to save these settings. So save desktop. OK. And now we want to actually transfer some files. So I'm going to take the SD card out of the ST and put it back in the PC. OK, so the SD card has been mounted on the PC. I can see that the only thing I have on the SD card is this desktop.inf, which is the, the file that saves the desktop state on the ST. Let's just check the size is what I expect. So I can see 510 megabytes, yep. Yeah. And now let's transfer some files. So I've got a directory here of files to copy. I'll open that up, a whole bunch of stuff, and I'll select that and paste it. It'll whiz across, and this is completely independent of the ST. This is just a PC SD card write. So it's really, really fast, no dependency on the old ST hardware, no dependency on the old SD, ST IO. Done. So I'm now going to take the SD card out of the PC and put it back in the ST. Okay, it's back in the ST. So let's double click this C drive and we can see 23 items. So it looks like those files have come across fine. Let's just check that one of them works. 
So I do like pinball. So let's go and find star ball. Run me. Yeah, looking pretty good.